In the last two videos, I talked about how to conditionally run code with an if statement and a ternary operator, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use a switch statement to do something very similar. So let's say that we have a variable here called favorite animal, and we just set this here, let's say cat, for example, and we wanted to run code conditionally based on what this person's favorite animal is. So in order to do this with a traditional if statement, we could just say if favorite animal, oops, animal is equal to cat, then we're going to run and log something out. Cats are pretty cool. Okay, there we go. And let's say else if their favorite animal is dog, we'll say favorite animal is equal to dog. We'll just say console.log. They are kind of loud. And we could continue this on with a bunch of different types of animals. We'll just do one more for now. We'll just say favorite animal equals shark console.log. That is an interesting, whoop, interesting choice. There we go. So now we have their favorite animals. And now let's just do another else. And we'll just say console.log. That is cool, but I am unfamiliar with that animal. There we go. So now if their favorite animal is a cat, it says cats are pretty cool. If it is a dog, it says they are kind of loud. If it's a shark, shark, then we just say that is an interesting choice. And finally, if they have some other favorite animal, like let's say cow for some reason, it'll say that is cool, but I'm unfamiliar with that animal. So this is a pretty standard if check, as you would assume here. But one thing that you'll notice about this is we repeat you know, this text favorite animal equal to something all over the place. We have to write that out multiple times. You can imagine if we had 100 animals in this list, it would kind of become cumbersome to write out favorite animal equal, equal, equal something every single time. So luckily, there's a switch statement that allows us to do this in a much more condensed way. Essentially, any time that you want to take one single variable, in our case, favorite animal, and compare it to multiple values and do something depending on if it is directly equal to one of those multiple values, you can use a switch statement. So to get started with a switch statement, all we need to do is write the text switched, and then we need to put inside of here parentheses and make sure I spell switch properly. It's just all lowercase, just one word. You'll notice it's correct if it turns purple or some other color that's significant in your text editor. And all we need to do here is put in the variable we want to check. In our case, we're checking the variable favorite animal. That's the variable that goes here inside of the section where we're checking equal, equal, equal against something else. And then we put in some curly brackets, and this is defining our scope. Just like with if statements, they have their own scope. Our switch statement has its own scope, everything inside these curly braces. And now what we do is in order to check a particular case, in this case, a cat, a dog, a shark, all we need to do is put the text case followed by here the actual you know value. In our case, this is going to be cat as our first one. So we'll say cat, and then you put a colon after the value. So you put the word case, you put a space, and then you put the actual value you're checking. In our case, this is cat. And then we put a colon, and then we can run inside of here whatever we want. We don't have any curly braces. This doesn't actually create its own scope. We just put a colon, and then it knows everything that comes after this is going to get run. So in our case, we'll just copy this code up here, console.log, cats are pretty cool. And a nice thing about your editor and prettier is it's automatically going to format this for you so that we actually have you know the nice indentation here before we go on to our next case. And our next case is going to be for dog. And all we need to do, make sure we put that colon in here, come down and let's just copy this console log. They are kind of loud. Now, if we save, you'll notice it automatically formats again for us so that these cases are indented one level from our switch and the code inside each case is indented one level further. And with a switch statement, we could put as much code inside of here as we want. I could have multiple logs, for example, console.log another log. This is going to work just fine. You can put as many lines inside of here as you want. It just has to be between a case. So we have a case here, and everything that comes between this and the next case is going to be run. So now let's get our final case in here, which is a shark. So we'll say case shark. Make sure we put that colon, and then let's just copy this text from up here, down here, click save, and there we go. We have this entire switch statement done, which configures all of this portion up here for our if and our else ifs. We're going to get to this else section a little bit later. Let's just comment this out, change this to cat, and see if our code works. We save. You see something interesting. Yes, it properly went with cat, and it says console log, cats are pretty cool, but it also printed out they're kind of loud, and it printed out that is an interesting choice, which is not necessarily what you want. Let's see what happens if we use dog. We save this. You'll notice it printed out they are kind of loud, and that is an interesting choice, but it doesn't print out this cats are pretty cool. And finally, if we do shark, you'll notice it just prints out the very last one and not the first two. And the reason for that is when you have a case, as soon as a case is true, in our case, 
favorite animal is equal to cat. This is true. It's going to run all the code inside that case, and it's going to continue to run all the code inside of all the other cases until it encounters the keyword break. So what happens is it says, okay, we have a case of cat. Let's start running code from here. So it runs this code, it runs this code, it runs this code. It's running every line in order. In order to stop that, what we need to do is put the word break inside of here. Now what happens is if we change this back to cat and we save, you'll see it only prints out cats are pretty cool because it says, okay, our case cat is true. Let's start running our code. We ran this code. We got to this word break. And what break says is exit out of our switch. It says, okay, that's all we care about. Exit out to the very bottom of our switch all the way down here. And if we put a break after each one of these, just like this, now what's going to happen is no matter what, if we're on cat, if we're on dog, or if we're on shark, it is always just going to run that one single line of code and then break out of everything instead of continuing to run the next case. The only scenario where you would want to not have a break is if you wanted to check multiple cases. For example, if you wanted to check cat and if you wanted to check something else, let's say we put in here case of bobcat. Because bobcats are kind of like cats, so we're going to say if you chose bobcat or cat, we want to run this section of code. So what you can do is you can write this case and just leave this empty. Don't put anything inside of here. Now what happens if this case is true or if this case is true, it's going to run this code for cat. We can check that. We can say cat and it says cats are pretty cool. And now if we change this to bobcat, you can see it still says cats are pretty cool because this case is true. We didn't reach any break. So it just starts running our code down here. It says cats are pretty cool. Then we break and exit out of our switch statement. And you can do as many cases as you want. For example, we can come in here and say jaguar. We could change this up here to Jaguar. Now again, it still says cats are pretty cool. All these cases are leading to the same set of code before this break statement. Now, in order to account for this else section here, all we need to do is instead of writing out a individual case, we just put the keyword default. And then we're gonna put our colon. And then inside of here, we could say console.log. We're just gonna copy all this text up here and paste it into here. Now, essentially what this is doing is it's saying, if it doesn't match any of these cases, and we haven't broke out yet, we're just going to run the code inside of our default, which in our case is that is cool, but I'm unfamiliar with that animal. So let's just change this to an animal that we don't have in here. For example, cow. Now you can see it says that is cool, but I'm unfamiliar with that animal. So we're running that default case automatically if we don't match any of these other cases. So now that we understand how this switch statement works, I actually want you to create your own switch statement. Let me just get rid of all of this code. And we're just going to have a variable here called number and you're going to set it to any number between one and three. Actually do one and five, any number between one and five. So we're going to check with a switch statement what this number is. So create a switch that checks to see the value of the number variable. Then what we want to do is if the number is zero, print out it is zero. If the number is one or two, print out it is small. If the number is three or four, print out it is medium. Oops, medium. And if the number is five, print out it is large. And then finally, if the number is none of these print out try again. So essentially all you're going to do is create a sit statement that checks this number variable. You can change this value to whatever you want to make sure it works. And if it's zero, you print out it's zero. If it's one or two, print out it is small. Three or four, print out it is medium. And finally, if it's exactly five, print out it is large. And then have your default case to make sure it prints out try again. So pause the video here, make sure you try this out, and then I'm going to show you how to do it in just a little bit. So hopefully you've had a chance to try this out. Let's just come down here a little ways. We're going to get this first step, which is creating a switch statement that goes on this value. So we'll say switch space put in our parentheses, put the keyword number here in our brackets. And now we have our switch statement created. We save this. Obviously nothing happens because we don't have any cases. Our first case is to see if it is zero. So we'll say case is zero. We want to put that colon. Make sure to put that colon. If you don't have that colon, it's going to give you an error. So we'll say console.log it is zero. If we change this to zero and save, you'll see it works. If we forget this colon though and save, you're gonna say uncaught syntax, unexpected identifier, and essentially it's just saying we forgot the colon here, and it's really important to make sure you put that. That's something that's really common to forget. 
Now, what we need to do is come down, create our next case. We're going to do one, for example, and we're going to just make sure we print out it is small. So console.log, it is small. And if we save this immediately, we're going to get both these printed out because you need to make sure you have your break at the end when you don't want to continue any further. In our case, if the case is zero, we're printing out zero and then exiting out. We don't want to print anything else. Now, the next thing you may think to do is just copy this down and do the exact same thing if our case is two, just like this. And that'll work if we change this to one or two. And if we put our break in here, break here and break here. So now if this is equal to one, it'll print it is small. If it's equal to two, it is small. But we're duplicating code. You see all of this code is duplicated between both of these different cases. Instead, what we can do is just add in our second case like this. So now it's saying if our case is one or two, we're running this code. And we can get rid of this case down here. Now, it doesn't matter if we're one or two, it still prints out properly. Next thing to do is check for our case of three. And we need to check for four, same exact way. And what we can do is console.log, it is medium. And make sure we have our break set in place. Now, the final thing to do is our case of five. And that's just going to console.log, it is large. And again, have our break. So let's just see if this is working. Change it to three, it says it is a medium. Four, it is medium. And five, it is large. Finally, our default case is just going to say console.log, it, or I'm sorry, try again. There we go. So now if we just change this to six, for example, it says try again because it is none of these cases at all. It essentially is their else condition or otherwise condition. So now that you understand even further how these switch statements work, you're probably asking yourself, when would you ever use these switch statements? And it's a pretty niche thing. You don't use them very often. But if you're going to check a specific variable against a lot of specific values, maybe even you need to do the same thing when you have these values, and maybe you're checking for a lot of values, then a switch statement makes sense. But oftentimes, you're not going to be doing this. You're generally going to be checking for more convoluted things or one-off checks. So switch statements are not something that you use very often, but it is important to understand how they work because there are specific use cases such as this, where you're checking one variable against multiple different values in the exact same way, then it's really common to use a switch statement for that type of code. Now in the next video, we're going to talk about for loops, which is a way for you to repeat code over and over again as many times as you want. I can't wait to see you in that video.